All right, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for attending my, uh, my speech. Uh, for those who, of you who were already at the FOSDEM, uh, this is basically the exact same talk, so uh, sorry, I will have to say it, uh, say it once again. But uh, basically, I'll be talking about Escoria and uh, what I want it to evolve into, because Escoria is a, uh, an adventure uh, a framework uh, for Godot aimed at allowing anyone to create adventure games point-and-click adventure games. We already had a great speech about GOAT uh, for adv adventure games. But there was this was for 3D games, basically. And uh, Escoria is currently aimed at 2D uh, adventure games, uh, point-and-click adventure games. So I'm, I will be mostly focused on this. So how do we make adventure games under Godot great again? Because currently Escoria is quite old, as, you, uh, as I will explain th this to you. So to uh, to explain what I, I'll be talking about, uh, first I will give you some more defini definitions about adventure games. What's a point-and-click adventure game? S uh, this is the questions we, uh, we require uh, to, in order to fully understand what Escoria means to respond to. So what's an adventure game, bas basically? What do adventure games creators, artists need? And why do they don't need? Do, what do they don't want to take care of? And then I will um, I'll introduce you uh, uh, about Escoria, more precisely, what it is, what, uh, where, how it was born, basically. What's its current status? Because, uh, yeah, uh, we have some, uh, I have some news about, uh, about that. And what we can do, what I <coughs> can do, and maybe you, uh, can help me to, uh, to make it evolve and make it great again. And some conclusions. So, the other, uh, that's the other way, I guess. Yeah. So, what's an uh, a point and click adventure game, at least in 2D? Basically, a few elements that you will have in uh, almost every kind of 2D adventure game. You will have a playable, and anima usually animated char character that's reacting to the user inputs in order to make it walk uh, across the room, for example, going to points to point and change uh, go from room to uh, room to room. You also have a certain number of items and NPCs to talk to. Uh, items to pick up, maybe in an inventory then. Uh, those items are also reacting to actions, as well as NPCs, you can talk to them, so we will have dialogues, as I will, as I will tell uh, just uh, in, the, uh, in the next slide. So you can talk to NPCs, pick up uh, items, use them, give them, and also any other actions that you maybe want to be able to create. Uh, there are some adventure games that don't use the usual uh, nine, v uh, nine, verb, uh, nine verb that you can find here. This is from Thimbleweed Park, for example, but those are the ones you can find in Monkey Island games from LucasArts, for example, but there are others. Uh, this one here in the illustration uh, uh, on the top is from Dog Mendoza. That's one professional game made with Escoria. Uh, Escoria was basically created for this one game and was released as open source afterwards. Also, what you can find in, uh, in adventure games, point-and-click adventure games, are puzzles using the items. That means, for example, combining items for in, the, uh, in your inventory and use these items onto, on your, uh, your environment. This is, almost, uh, um, this is basically the, the same idea we saw in, the, in Goat's presentation yesterday. So puzzles, items, com combinations. I already talked about dialogues. Those you can find over, uh, over here. You can talk to... Uh, other, pl uh, other NPCs or even to other playable characters. Sometimes you can have also some uh, specific features for your game such as sw switching playable, char uh, playable character um, um, yeah, the, uh, this kind of stuff or also changing their costume so this is basically, basically the same character but he wants to wear something else uh, as a costume to uh, for example, sneak into um, a secret base, um, enemy secret base, this kind of stuff. And as a reward for the game's action, for the user actions, and to advance in, in the game, you want to be able to create cutscenes, which basically are as in a, as in a movie. You want your char your characters uh, to behave uh, following a, a scenario. So you want to write a scenario and the f uh, and all the game's elements to behave on their own. 
So without any user input. So uh, in order to create a game, because uh, we are talking games here, uh, this is an artistic occupation. So let's talk about the artists first. What do artists want? First, they want to be res uh, responsible of all the art they are creating from the beginning to the end, from the black canvas to the moment that we'll, uh, they will put it into the, um, into the game as a sprite, basically, or an animated sprite uh, in Godot. So they don't want to be dependent on programmers. They want to be able to do everything on their own on go in Godot. That's the, uh, that's the basic idea. They, uh, as an example, they don't want to have to ask the programmer, oh, uh, I modified the, uh, the art. Uh, can you please update this, pr this sprite uh, and, uh, so, so I can see what it looks like in the, in the engine? They want to be able to do that on their own without asking anyone. So this is very specific to, uh, to video games artists, of course, else they are static PNG artists. So this is very specific to video games. This was uh, for, the, for the artists. We also have the game designers. They are basically the, pe the people in teams who are in charge of creating the rooms and um, making the story, all the dialogues with the NPCs, all the puzzles. Uh, they are the, the people who are writing the game. Based, uh, that's the, the idea. So they are the, the people who are building the rooms with the background areas, walkable areas as well. Uh, and cr creating the, um, all the story pl the, pl the player wants to play. So they want to, uh, to put hotspots areas, that's the, um, mm, the areas that the mo mouse cursor can, uh, can, can put on the items in the, on the background. Uh, trigger areas, for example, if your characters can uh, walk over some areas and trigger some event, like a cutscene, for example. Items. NPCs, uh, as I said before. So that's basically in ac uh, an access to influence the game logic. But not too much, because if you, if you g give them too much freedom, then you basically require the programmer all the time and uh, evolve the game scripts all the time as well. Which means you, uh, you will always, uh, you, you, you will never have a, uh, a, um, a basis that won't move at all. But you need something complex enough for them to be able to create the game they want. But what do, why do they, what do great game creators don't want at all? In my opinion, again, this is some, some, uh, something we can talk about, but I, don't, I think they don't want to care about the technical stuff. Let's talk about UI here. I told you that uh, um, usually uh, point and click adventure games feature inventories, label, highlights, all this kind of stuff. This is very technical under the wood, and usually game, uh, game creators don't want to mess with this. If the framework is able to manage uh, everything like this without the game, uh, the game creator it's, uh, himself to mess with it, it's okay. He's, uh, he wants to be able to define the appearance, change the theme, the colors, where it's, uh, it's supposed to be on the screen, all this kind of stuff, but nothing more. If the, uh, uh, if the framework is able to do everything for him, that's good. The rest is too technical. Same goes for um, the way the characters actually move. This is the engine stuff. Basically, it, me it means moving the sprite, uh, translate them, scale them. Uh, usually, you, uh, you'll also want the characters to, um, to be bigger if, they are, um, if you are they are closer to the camera and smaller if they are more um, in, um, uh, in the behind, in the third part of the scene, very far away from the camera. So they, uh, the game creators don't want to mess with, the, with this. They just want to have an easy way to define if the character is supposed to be small if he's far away and big if he's in front of the camera. And that's all, nothing, uh, and nothing else. Same goes for the, uh, the animations as well. Godot provides already uh, interesting stuff to, uh, to create animations especially for 2D, adve uh, 2D adventure games uh, with the animated sprites, for example, but that's not the uh, only solutions, of, of course. But they just want to create the animations or import them if, uh, if they can, Na give them a name, of course, using Godot, and call them into their scripts, nothing more. Managing the way the animation is actually called and played 
is not interesting. Just create the animation, name it, call it, and so on. It goes, uh, it goes the same for me uh, about the sound management, changing the music when you change the room. You just want to define one music per room, and, uh, and that's all. You don't want to code this technical, boring stuff. Well, that's cool. Uh, because Godot already provides everything we, ne we need to do the, uh, this stuff, right? S uh, a sprite, animated sprite, animation player, that's cool. That's already some kind of uh, high-level stuff. You have already GDScript to script all your nodes together and code your game, uh, your game logic. So that's, uh, it's fine, React, uh, all your scenes are reacting to inputs. But this means, as I said, coding managers for the, uh, the animation, the sound, inputs, events, timings, and uh, etc. This brings a lot of difficulties, especially if you're targeting mobile platforms using tactile device. Um, all this works different. Sometimes you will even have different uh, input management depending on the platform you are, you are targeting. So you will want to have basically two different games, at least in the way the input works. So Godot itself is already too level for this need when you are to uh, we are talking to game creators. So we need more simplicity. And here, com uh, here comes Escoria. So what is Escoria, at least currently? I define it as a set of tools and scripts. That's basically it. Uh, it comes on top of Godot Engine. So you uh, just copy a, a whole bunch of scripts, a big folder with a, a, a few scripts and, uh, and scenes, and use them, basically. So you just attach the, the, um, the provided scripts, tweak them a bit, modify their parameters, and, parameters, and you already have a basic workflow. You're able to build your rooms, create your, um, your items, put them in, uh, in your scenes, and using the, um, using the scripts, you are already able to, uh, to do some stuff. That's a, a tool uh, aimed at teams, mostly. As I said, it was created, but I, I will explain this uh, in, the, in the slide just after. It was uh, made for a, um, built on, for a game that was built by a team. So, first of all, how does, it, uh, does this, uh, this work? Those scripts are applied on Godot scenes, and Escoria features a scripting language called ESC, for ESC, ARIA, which basically defines actions uh, with a semicolon in front of them. So we, uh, you will have, uh, in this example, an item with an action for look. Oops, sorry. So yeah, an, uh, an action for look here, which basically will make the, play, uh, the, char um, the player characters say, uh, oh, yeah, that, that's a nice red bed. And another action uh, with the use verb that will make say something else. You can also have a lot of, um, a lot of comments provided by this scripting language, allowing you to put the, the item uh, in the inventory, if it's meant to be, uh, or start on other, uh, other actions, other animations maybe, uh, if you are actually trying to, I don't know, uh, use, some, uh, use some item on this red bed, like start another, uh, another uh, a cutscene or start another dialogue, make another character arrive in the room, and uh, stuff like that. So this all cares about, the, um, Escoria already cares about all the aforementioned managers I talked about. So it cares about the items, it cares about the, um, the inventories, navigation of your, uh, of your characters across the scene, um, the sound, the music, etc. So uh, as, I was, uh, as I said, um, Escoria was created in uh, two, uh, 2012 uh, as a classic pointing plate gameplay, gameplay for um, Doc Mendoza and P uh, Pizza Boy inter as interactive adventures by Ocam, uh, uh, th and this game was created by a team uh, um, of, of six persons, uh, which came up to 12 in total. This, this game was kickstarted, and as a, as a, re as a reward, uh, the Escoria framework was supposed to be released open source, and uh, as soon as the game was uh, signed with a pub publisher and released, there it was, uh, Escoria was released. 
So this is, uh, this is not enough, at least in my opinion. Uh, we have a bunch of scripts, but Escoria, um, those scripts are pretty old right now. Escoria was written under a Godot engine, very old version, and Godot engine is now in version 3.2 since a few days, and many, f many features uh, have appeared by then. So we need to evolve Escoria a lot. It's, uh, we have tried to make it evolve a bit, uh, but uh, I was all alone and I've been helped a lot by uh, a Sweden game creator who was very busy with his own game development, so he made it evolve, but this, is, uh, this was not actually going to the direction I wanted, so I'd like to, uh, to start something else. Maintenance is not very easy because Escoria uh, scripts are really huge. So there's some need to, um, to make them sp uh, split in different scripts, probably. They currently deal with many different elements at the same time, and I often encounter the ca cases of GD script function that uh, actually look into um, Escoria events in the middle of uh, navigation, uh, uh, navigation functions, for example, where they, this shouldn't happen to me. Navigation functions should be only uh, managing uh, navigation orders, like move there and move there only. Don't move there if there is uh, this uh, ele element in the event. This is not interesting. So simplicity and uh, more homogene homogeneity uh, in, uh, in the way all these functions work. Currently, you, uh, yeah, you, you, there are many hacks everywhere, and yeah, this is no good. To, sh uh, to show you an example of this, uh, this, is, um, this is a scene in Godot that, um, that defines a room in your, in your game. You will have, for example, here the background. This is a texture rect. It, it is in charge of uh, getting all the user inputs, all user clicks, on the uh, on the background, using the scripts the the, the script that's provided here, and you also have the terrain there, with the navigation polygon instance that current, that actually defines the area that your user uh, playable character is actually able to walk in, and all the other ele elements here. You have middle ground, so you can have uh, non-interactive stuff, but also interactive stuff here. Stuff here that's uh, items, basically, and so on. So, um, actually, the, the fact is that rooms must, uh, rooms and not only rooms, the same goes for player, but they have to respect a precise tree definition. As you can see, the, the, um, the node for back background is name background, and that's for a reason. If you want to name it my background or uh, landscape or whatever, this won't work. You cannot name all your nodes the way you want, and this is not flexible at all. I'd like Escoria to don't care about naming of your nodes. This is not interesting. Let the game creators do what he, wha he wants, and let, uh, let's have the, um, the framework to adapt instead. Same goes for the, um, for the order. Certain nodes need to, have, uh, need to be in a certain order in the scene tree, which is not very you know, easy to understand for someone who doesn't really know how, um, how good it works. Because of this, this, this is very, it is very hard to add new features in the, into his career. So let's talk about, um, about the goals. First of all, simplify the usability. There, are, uh, there is a bunch of scripts everywhere, and it's, uh, it's difficult to understand which one does what. So simplify everything. Keep it as simple as, as possible to use and maintain. Because even for me, which uh, I, uh, I am not the creator of Escoria at all, I, uh, I knew it only when it was released and open sourced. So it was very difficult to dive into it. And if it was, uh, I assume that it, if, if it was difficult for me, then it will be difficult for anyone. So, uh, and so goes for, um, the same goes for the game creators. If they, if they want to add some features, they will lose basically time to make their game and add features into his career instead. But in this regard, it's not, not, not very interesting to make a new adventure game studio 
or a visionaire under Godot. Godot is a, a generic game engine. So not interesting to remake what's already existing. That's not exactly the purpose. In this regard, uh, I want to make a Scorian editor plugin because editor plugins uh, will help to tie the, um, tie the framework in, uh, more, um, more tightly in the, into the editor. This was not ex uh, an existing feature in previous version of, uh, of Godot, of course. And uh, we, will never, uh, we never took t the time to make Escoria work that way. This will allow to add, for <coughs> example, custom notes. Currently, everything is uh, normal uh, Godot notes in Escoria. It would be m probably more interesting to have custom notes for those. Uh, so, let's, so for example, player, items, NPCs, room, trigger, hotspots, and, uh, and so on. Also, having an integrated editor plugin like this one will allow to add a new, new feature directly in the, into the editor. For example, ESC scripting editor. Currently, you can uh, write all sorts of texts and scripts into, uh, into the script editor, but uh, there's nothing in order to, uh, to <coughs> allow you to write Escoria scripts, which respect a, s a specific syntax, which <coughs> is pretty easy to, uh, to write because it was not designed for programmers, it was designed for uh, game designers. Uh, but still, you are not able to see them and edit them directly into the editor, which would be interesting. Same goes for other IDs, uh, which may be interesting <coughs> or maybe not, it depends. Uh, I thought about, for example, graph-based dialogue editors. There are already some existing as, uh, as pro projects on GitHub, <coughs> for example. So that's in addition to, uh, to ESC uh, scripting language. A also, an, a relationship viewer, viewer for, um, between your items, for example, uh, and see more, f uh, more <coughs> faster how your items will behave wi one with the other. And most of all, uh, <coughs> allow the, the, the user to add custom scripts to add new, functional fun new functionalities into the um, uh, into Escoria framework, instead of <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> instead of having him um, in, instead of having him modifying the whole Escoria script base. Uh, let me introduce to you the folder where all the scripts of the uh, where are located all Escoria scripts. This is only one folder with everything in it. And uh, to me, this is a whole mess. Everything is in, a, is the, in this big global folder. And the first task is, of course, to set everything and sort everything in different folders in order to have something more like this. This is the, um, the current state of the, of the rework. Uh, I will talk about it uh, a bit later, but basically this is an, an Escoria, um, uh, a Godot engine add-on, editor plugin, and everything is more uh, separated into different tasks. You will have all the Escoria backend here in the, in the core scripts folder and all the scenes that may be useful, but I don't want the user to have to mess into it. Just use it and that's all. And the game sh uh, would be then in this one folder. All the, um, all the game creator stuff would be totally separated from the Escoria framework, which is currently not exactly the case. As I said, um, all the scripts currently, um, currently attached to, your, uh, to the Godot nodes are not very clever. I want them to be smarter in order to uh, not care about their name, the name of the nodes. This is not interesting. Let the, uh, let the user make it exactly the way he wants. Uh, so try to guess each node's purpose based on its type. That's the, uh, the idea between, having, uh, between the fact to have custom nodes. Also, let's try to avoid the sentry to, uh, to receive game, uh, Escoria game events. Escoria should only send basic orders to all the nodes like move, uh, uh, move, rotate, play animations, and that's all. No, uh, no information 
internal to his career should go, uh, should go back to the, u the, the scene that a user created. So only purpose from, uh, for those uh, front scenes are receive user inputs and give them to Escoria. Escoria makes, makes its, its work and gives back orders, simple orders to the, uh, to the front end. And to finish, uh, let's talk about the example scenes. Current example scenes are crappy, and I mean it. This wonderful scene is the current demo scene of Escoria. And this, and this is bad. This is really ugly, and um, the, the, you have the, the main player here. I, I don't even recognize it. It's, re it's really ugly. So we, I want it to be a little bit more appealing, as you can imagine, and have some, uh, something more interesting for the, the users, because having more users interested in uh, and appealed by the example scenes means more, u more users, more game creators, and eventually more contributors to, uh, to the framework to make it better. So uh, I need to remake this, uh, this demo scene. Actually, don't remake it. Let's get rid of it completely. That's easier. And uh, make multiple demo scenes showcasing all the Escoria features as they uh, already exist. Uh, so that means item uh, actions, basic actions, pick up using end combinations, also the, uh, the inventory, one by one, one by, uh, by room, actually. Uh, background animations as well, dialogues, but have, uh, have um, as much rooms as, uh, as features. That will be easier for the, uh, for the new users to, uh, to use and modify to make their own games. Make it appealing, considering the, uh, the basis, that should be relatively easy. I think I can do better myself, even if I'm not a drawer anyway. So that's, uh, that's the basic idea in, in remaking, the, uh, remaking the demo scenes. This has just started. I'm just talking to, uh, to you about, about it so I can have a little bit of fi uh, feedback. It just started, so there is no working branch yet. I will start to, uh, to put it on GitHub very soon as a new working branch on, uh, under the, uh, the SQRI repository, of course. Uh, so if, you, if one of you ever uh, was already using SQRI, then I'm sorry, because uh, expect compa compatibility breakage, like Massive once, uh, because I'm starting this over from scratch. Why I do this is to simply remove all bugs, all hacks, and add every portion of code one by one and see if it still works and make it better if I can. I want to, uh, to keep all the, uh, the existing features, ex especially the, the SCORE scripting language, which is already good. It's, uh, it, it's been reliable uh, and it, proves u it, it has been proved useful by, uh, by its user during document DOSA's development. So remove hacks, fix bugs uh, when possible. Of course, I cannot give you any uh, uh, date of delivery uh, because, well, that's open source. Uh, so that gives you one thing to wait for, uh, except from Godot. <laughs> and now, wh what, can, what can you do about that? Well, first of all, you, you, can, uh, you can drop by on Godot engine-scoria on Freenode. Uh, that's usually the place I hang on. So you can share your ideas and suggestions. Uh, they are welcome. And you can also file your issues uh, and also suggestions on, uh, on the GitHub repo, which I gave the, uh, the UR, uh, URL here. And um, yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> Any questions? So I come from uh, web development, and uh, many times we need to, to do refactoring or uh, rewriting from scratch. We do our best, we, <laughs> some of us, 
do our best to implement testing. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> is that uh, possible in Godot? Will you be doing any testing to make sure that what you're uh, implementing uh, is uh, what uh, you mean to implement and you get rid of the bugs, get rid of the code, <laughs> get the code back in and <laughs> get the bugs back in? Yeah, uh, I intend to, uh, to, be, uh, to work with uh, as, many <coughs> as many people as possible to, uh, to get all the feedbacks and also feature some some tes uh, testing scenes made for, um, especially for testing, in order to ease the way uh, Escoria uh, is, uh, is used. That's the purpose of the demo scenes, actually. Um, sh showcase one feature, uh, the features all by uh, one by one will ease probably the, um, the way the game is created. Same goes when, uh, when you have a room full of many features fr uh, from the engine. C currently, Escoria is a m is a mess to actually uh, actually debug, even for uh, for the internal. This is something I really want to work on because cur currently that's uh, that's very difficult. This is the purpose of the simplification I I talked about. Uh, having something more simple means some means to me something easier to de to debug, for the game developer and also for the for Escoria maintainers. Does that answer you your questions? Other questions? Uh, hi, thank you for your talk. Mm, this, this looks great. And uh, it's a wonderful idea to start with a game, like an actual working game, and then extract whatever you can use to in other uh, adventure games, in my opinion. Uh, so the question is, uh, apart from this first game, and uh, we, we, as you mentioned, uh, people who are work working with Escoria already should be ready. Should be prepared for uh, breaking compa compatibility soon. Uh, uh, do you know of any other games that were made that we we could play like uh, download? Well, I cannot talk about that uh, right now because uh, those games are still under development. But I just uh, I talked about that uh, s a Swedish guy who's, uh, who was helping me maintaining it because he was uh, actually a user of it. Uh, he's currently working on a game, and he's having struggling a lot uh, with Escoria currently. I have n not a lot of news because the um, uh, Escoria is currently a bit under sleep. Uh, yeah, we all st uh, we are all struggling str struggling with our own lives. That's how it is. But I want to, uh, to take this o uh, over again. And not a, not a lot of games are currently using Escoria, but I n I've received a lot of feedback about it, uh, of people interested in using it, because it's made, of, uh, it's made with Godot, and uh, Godot uh, is getting a bit more of importance uh, these times. So that's interesting. And we are currently lacking uh, a framework of, uh, for this, uh, this very purpose. Uh, Goat can, could be something very in interesting in the 3D matter. Uh, Escoria could be also interesting, or, or maybe something, why not, uh, merge in, in the future uh, to, ca to deal with all, uh, all, the stuff we, uh, all the stuff that exists. I will have some tests to do, but that would be interesting. Um, so I know there are some users uh, that, that use Escoria today. Considering the, f uh, the, the compatibility breakage I talked about, uh, I, will, uh, I received uh, a pull request yesterday from an, a very old friend of mine, which I had uh, never met uh, b before this year's first dem. Uh, like uh, I, knew him I knew him 15 years ago, and we met for the first time. And he uh, happened to be a Godot user. And he tried to, uh, to, uh, to use Escoria and actually fixed everything to make it work with 3.2 uh, Godot engine so, uh, version, so he made a pull request. And uh, I'll, uh, I think I will accept this pull request into a newer branch and, that, uh, and in order to make it the current stable version. So this, uh, this will not be as nice as I want it to be, but actually it will work, basically work. Uh, there uh, also exists uh, this Floss manual project uh, named Escoria in Daisa, which is a very small adventure game uh, intended for, uh, for kids, I think, uh, which was made for Escoria as a um, tutorial purpose. There was also a, uh, a manual written along with it to describe 
how uh, S Korea is supposed to work. So uh, using it completely, you how to use the, um, the S Korea script language, everything is explained. The, uh, the this book is very uh, is very well done, very well written. So uh, look for FLOSS manuals, F L O S S M uh, M A N U E L L S uh, on on GitHub or or Google it, and you will find everything you you require to use Escoria as it is right now. Also, I didn't talk about it, but of course, since Escoria will evolve a lot, that means documentation a lot. Uh, there is there there is many doc uh, documentations actually, uh, which was made by uh, this uh, Sweden guy. Thanks a lot, guy, <laughs> if you watch me. Um, and uh, yeah, he ma he made a good job in this, but unfortunately, I, uh, I since everything will break, I don't want the function the the way it works to change that much for the user. But behind the scene, I want it to be uh, to behave completely differently. Um, so there, there uh, scripting for video games is, is common for every types of video game. That it could be used in 2D games or even other types of game. Uh, is the scripting language and uh, used by uh, Escoria uh, is it entangled with the point and click aspect, or could it be used uh, alone uh, as a uh, scripting for uh, any game? Uh, no, uh, currently this uh, scripting language, language is totally aimed at point-and-click adventure games. So uh, it, it was made as um, uh, something to, uh, to to mimic actually the way how Scum, if you know the uh, the, the Scum engine, uh, this is an old game engine made by LucasArts for Monkey Island games, Indiana Jones, and etc. This uh, this sorts of games. Uh, all the scripts were intended to be written as scenarios, like uh, player says this, uh, characters go there, uh, characters takes this. And this is, uh, this is exactly like a movie scenario, if you want. And s scripts were intended to, uh, to behave a bit like this, actually. So that's the idea, and it's very, very close to the way Escoria currently works. I don't think it would be very useful for other game purposes, unfortunately, but it's, uh, it's really intended to ma manage inventory. Although, um, if, you, if you want to use it and evolve this script and language, that's possible, because you have the, uh, you have the source code, uh, which is GDScript, basically, and you can add new fun functionalities to uh, to fulfill your, uh, your needs, basically. Y you have inventories, uh, uh, you can add anything you want, I think. So that could be pos uh, possible, but currently it's not. Uh, after this, just a quick follow-up question. Is Escoria script documented somewhere else than the Floss manual? Is it documented yeah. in the repo? Yeah. Because I think some of these things are quite useful in any kind of adventure game, not necessary to to the point and click, so maybe uh, I, I would like to take a look. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, you, you can go on the um, on the repository uh, over here. Uh, just remove the issues at the end of the URL, and y uh, if you look through the um, the sor source code, you you may encounter a docs folder where everything has been documented. Uh, I want to, uh, I would like to remake it, but since I don't want this Korea language to change a lot, uh, it won't change. I won't change it a lot uh, while while my uh, refactoring pro uh, doing my refactoring process, so it should not evolve a lot. I guess you can have a look right now, and uh, should I it should not change anyway. Any more questions? Right. Thank. You.